Okay, so here I am in one of my favourite restaurants in Tuscany and it's in San Sepulcro and all I would like to say to you is happy 2023 everybody. Right, I had a look at the menu and I've decided what I'm going to have and uh, scusi. Um, bisogno la um, spaghetti di carbonara e uh, anche una insalata mista per favore. Insieme. Insieme. Sì. Grazie mille. Grazie. Grazie. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so here we go. Buying a house in Italy. Right, where do I start? Well, first of all, you need to come to Italy and identify the region where you want to be. Now, for some of you, that might be, you know, a foregone conclusion. You want to be in Tuscany, you want to be in Umbria, but there are other amazing regions in Italy, and it's it's really where you want to float your boat. Do you want to be close to an international airport? Um, the majority of Tuscany, the nearest airports for international travellers will be in either Milan or in Rome. And it's about a two and a half hour drive. So that's one way to, or one thing to take into consideration when you're choosing a house. I know Bologna has flights from America. Um, and I also know in the summer months, that Florence actually has a few um, flights from, I believe, Newark. Um, but apart from that, those are the two international airports. Further afield, there are lots of domestic airports and there are lots of airports which are flying all over Europe. So you could get a connecting flight, you know, either from Hamstam or from you know, Germany or from Italy, uh, sorry, from England, if you so wanted to. So you've come to Italy and um, you're looking to buy a house and you're going around and maybe that you've identified a property um, that you wish to buy. Now there is a property price and your agent will tell you um, what that property price is and it is up to you to decide to make an offer on that property under market conditions. Now, obviously, if we're in a downturning market and it's a buyer's market, then I would say to you, you need to make an offer, um, which may be 10, maybe 20% lower than the asking price, or you would need to make an offer where you feel comfortable. But in a rising market, I think you need to look very sensibly. Now, for a long period of time, uh, in fact, since 2008, the market's been pretty flat. But since the end of COVID, um, we have seen for the first time two or three people bidding on the same property. But what's important is that you identify the property which you want to buy, which floats your boat, which has on your list, it ticks, you know, and it rings all your bells. Um, if an offer is accepted by the vendor, the process will begin. Now, the first thing that you will need is a Codice Fiscale, which is a tax code in Italy. It doesn't matter what nationality you are, you will need a tax code. And um, it doesn't mean to say that that tax code will mean that you will pay Italian tax. However, we will get to that later. If you do become a resident, that will be your security number um, or your social security number or you know your tax code. So fiscally, that will be your number. Now, it's quite an easy thing to do. And part of the services from our company is that we will do that for you. You need to sign some forms. Um, the next thing that basically that um, the agent may ask you to do is to sign, um, once you agree the price, is sign something which is called an irrevocable letter of offer and put down a small deposit, maybe 10, 15, 20,000. Personally, I don't like it. And the reason I don't like it is that why would you give money to somebody that you don't know on a property which basically hasn't had its full checks um, and I just, I just don't like doing it, and so we don't do it. But what we will do is potentially sign a letter of offer, which is then just focusing you as the buyer with the possibility of buying the property and the vendor with the possibility of selling the property. Now, we cannot do all the property checks which are necessary on every property which 
we are instructed on. Um, it, there just isn't enough time, and it is not our responsibility. I mean, within our mandate, which we ask vendors to sign, it actually clearly states it is their responsibility to make sure that their property is in a sellable condition. And that is one of the most important things about buying a house in Italy. So, you've made your offer, your offer's been accepted, right? And then we will ask you to sign an agreement letter between the parties. And that will say how long it's going to take for you to buy it. And also will potentially lay down other terms and conditions which may be stipulated. You know, for instance, I would assume all of you would want a survey. Now we have independent surveyors which are not connected to the company and they will be able to facilitate a full structural survey for you and I would recommend that you do that. There is also something which is called a relazione technical which is basically a deep, going deep into the planning of the property and that is normally done by another professional and we ask the vendors to do that as well because what we don't want to do is that you've just become excited you found the house that you fall in love with you want to crack on and buy that house and then you know little known to us or to you or potentially to the vendor for that matter there is a technical issue with the property which may take months to resolve it has happened, believe me. And so what we try to do is to make sure that, the, to the best of our ability, the houses are in a sellable condition. Grazie. So, you sign this offer letter, which gives you, and I think it's a very good idea, a period of time of exclusivity to enable you to do your due diligence on the property. Now, in Italy, you do not need a lawyer or, or an attorney to facilitate the transaction for you. Now, if you... <coughs> oh, grazie. Oh, it looks fantastic. Mixed salad. Yummy. So you do not need a lawyer under the Italian system. However, some people feel much more comfortable about taking a lawyer. And I would suggest to you, if you feel comfortable about taking a lawyer, then take a lawyer because that's the most important thing. A lawyer is going to charge you approximately 1% to 1.5% of the purchase price value. Now let's get to the elephant in the room because basically there's basically, we've only just started, but the agency fees are paid by both sides. They are paid by the vendor and they are paid by the purchaser. So you might say to yourself, well, who's who are you working for? And it's an extremely good question because what we're doing here is we are mediating a transaction between two parties and we want the transaction to go through because our commission is based on the purchase and sale of the property as a commission-led only company. So, oh, and by the way, uh, normal commissions in Italy are 3% to be paid by the buyer and 3% to be paid by the vendor plus of, of the purchase price plus 22% VAT or EVA or property or valid added tax, taxes. Some agents, and under Italian law, will ask you to pay that, and when we get to that point later, we'll pay that when you exchange contracts or when you sign the covering letter or when you basically complete the first step of the private agreement to purchase. A lot of you who might be watching this video in the UK will say to yourself, I'm not paying that because I only pay fees uh, on completion, and that is true. And so therefore, to basically because a lot of the work that we do is up to the point of the exchange of contracts, we will ask you for 50% of our fees to be paid once the contract, the initial contract has been signed and the balance on completion. Note to self, if the contract is conditional, we will only ask you to pay our fees once the conditions have been met. Now, I know this is a lot to take in, 
So if you want me to repeat anything at a later stage, just send me a comment below and I will try to answer your question directly. So let's have a little recap because there's a lot going on. You've come to Italy, we've taken you on a tour, you've found a house you wanted to buy, you've made an offer, the vendor has accepted the offer, we've asked you to sign an engagement letter or a letter of, or, or a, a letter of agreement, if you like to call it, by both parties without it putting any money down. Then the hard work starts, you've got a period of exclusivity. You then instruct somebody to do a structural survey for you. We would then at the same time go through with a fine tooth comb the legality of the property. We have, if not already asked for the vendor to do a thorough check of the property, or if we haven't, at this stage we will. Okay, because we want to know exactly what's going on because we certainly don't want to waste anybody's time. So we're all working together to purchase this property. The next thing that we will do is to prepare something which is called a preliminary contract. Now, it is an exchange of contracts in the UK, or um, uh, I think it is a, a, a letter of offer in other territories. But what it would do, it will cite the names and the parties, and there will be conditions within it. Now, at this point, you will probably know exactly how or what, if anything, needs to be updated uh, either on the registered plans of the, of the property or within the comune of the property or there needs to be things which need to be done and so therefore the lead time for you purchasing it will be a period of time but I will tell you right now that the minimal amount of time that you can purchase a property in Italy is going to be six weeks from the time that you've agreed with the vendor a purchase price to the time that you can buy the property. And it may be a lot longer. Now, one of the reasons why is that in Italy, we have something which is called preemption rights. That means if you are buying a house in the countryside with land, it means that those registered farmers who are bordering the land have a right to purchase the land and the property as well. There is a process which works and the way that we do that is that basically we sign a letter or a, 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 a preliminary contract and then that contract is then notified to those registered farmers. Now one of the questions which we'll get to that somebody asked me as well is that where should I send my deposit money? Now normally in Italy a deposit is between 10 to 30% of the asking price. I've got a little bit of salad, but I'm gonna be waiting for my, my pasta to arrive, which will be arriving in a minute. Mm. Vegetables, I love them. Now, I'm not gonna send my money directly to the vendor with a person I don't know. I would like to have that money kept in escrow. Now. If you employ a lawyer, the lawyer will be able to keep that money in escrow, but some lawyers in Italy do not have escrow accounts. Now, the law has changed recently, and if or when you instruct your notary, your notario, and he is the only official body in Italy that can facilitate the transfer of a Italian property. So he is an essential part of the buying process, right? and you will need one. And I would recommend that you choose one <laughs> locally, right, who knows the area and knows all the surveyors and everybody else that will be able to help you. Now, if that lawyer has an escrow account or if there are conditions to be met within the contract, I would highly recommend that you send the money to the notary's account once you have signed. So we have drawn up for you or we have drawn up in conjunction with your lawyer um, or in conjunction with the lawyer and the notary um, the preliminary agreement um, now that's the first part now you can sign a preliminary agreement in front of a notary is going to cost you quite a lot more money but to safeguard yourself at a later stage, it may be necessary. And some people will say, or a lawyer may insist, that what we do is that we sign a contract in front of the notary. 
you do not need to. You can actually purchase the property by the private agreement, which it is, the signing of the compromissal. But when it comes to making a deposit, I would highly recommend that basically that you send the deposit money either to your lawyer's escrow account or to the notary account. Now, some lawyers do not have a escrow account. We as agency immobiliari, as state agents or realtors, we are unable to take your money and keep it in an escrow account. But an official, either your lawyer or the notary will be able to do so. Now, the reason that they would, you would do so is one, um, you still haven't bought the house um, and there may be complications with it. And if the deal doesn't go through, you're going to have to ask for your money back. Um, and secondly, it's just for peace of mind that you know that your money is being held by a professional. Um, there may be conditions that need to be met, you know, and that's the reason why. And so the structure of the contract, if it is conditional, like something needs updating, it will say that basically the funds will be released to the vendor once the conditions have been met. And as I mentioned before on this video, our fees are normally structured to say exactly the same. So if the contract is conditional, once the conditions are met, then our fees will be paid because we do not want vendors to actually be taking money out of their own personal accounts to pay our fees. Moving on. Right, we've gone through the initial buying process, finding the house, making your offer, securing your period of exclusivity, getting your ducks in the road. Grazie. Oh, wow. That looks just totally amazing. Bon appetito. Okay, so let's crack on. Mm. Right. So what we've done as a recap is that you come to Italy, you've found your property, you signed an agreement letter, the vendor has agreed, you had a period of exclusivity, your surveyor has come, you've appointed a lawyer if you so wish the lawyer or ourselves have helped you choose a notary right? we have written in conjunction with either the lawyer or the notary the preliminary contract in the stipulation of the preliminary contract there will be a deposit and that deposit would be as i mentioned 10 to 30 percent of the purchase price that that money will can be sent if the house is absolutely fine to the vendor directly if not then i would again recommend it recommend you send it to the lawyer or the notary you can either be held until the final contract or it can be released if there are conditions to be made and i hope you are following this it can be complicated but honestly it's not. However, if the vendor decides that he is going to accept a higher offer or wishes to withdraw from the contract once he has signed the preliminary agreement, he will have to give you back double the deposit. If you decide as the purchaser to withdraw from the contract once you have signed the preliminary agreement, you will, have, you will lose your deposit. So you have to be sure that you are ready to buy and that's the property that you wish to buy. Let's move on now to purchasing taxes. Purchasing taxes in Italy, and this is the point which we were going to be talking about, excuse me. This is why you want to come to Italy. Some people want to become a resident here. And, um, you know, if you are British um, and no longer in the EU, 
uh, it can be a little bit difficult, more difficult for you to become a resident than it was before. Because within the EU, you just turned up and you went, hey, I'm a resident. But now there are certain amounts of steps that you have to go through. For all other nationalities, those are the steps which you would have gone through normally. Now the laws are changing all the time. You get a visa, right, which is an open visa, although it may change that you need to purchase your visa in the next two or three years for a small amount of money, maybe 20 or 30 euros, which will entitle you for a period of time, potentially two years, to enter Italy for a period of no longer than 180 days in a year. But there's a caveat. And the caveat is, is that you can only enter a full-time period of 90 days before you, re you, before you have to spend 90 days out of the country and then you can re-enter for another 90 days. I hope I've made myself clear. But what a, a number of British people don't seem to understand is within the EU, the 90-day period is within Europe, not just Italy. So if you went to Prague for the weekend or you had a holiday in the south of France or, you know, you went to any other Greece or any other you know, EU destination, that accumulation of the time which you have will all add up to your 90 days. So one has to be careful. If you wish to become a resident here, then you basically can do so. When you purchase your property, the notary will ask to you whether you are going to be a resident and or not. Now, the taxes are quite different between the two things. If you're a resident, you will pay 2% of the catastrophic value of the property. I know it's going to be difficult. Let me try to explain. Each property has a value and each property is completely different and each property has been given that value by the tax authorities. So you can look at a property over there and there'll be a property over here and they will both have different tax codes. And so you will pay the 2% on the catastrophic value with a calculation which we are not going to go into it now. If, on the other hand, that you are going to pay to, to purchase the property as a non-resident, you are going to be paying 9%. And so 2% and 9% can be quite a difference between the two things. But I urge all of you right, to be extremely careful. Because if you declare yourself as a resident in Italy, and within an 18 months period, you do not become a resident, the Italian tax authorities will charge you the difference and a big fine. You have been warned. The other thing to take into consideration is that if you do decide to declare yourself as a resident, you will need to make a Italian tax return. So it's not as easy as you think. Now I'm just going to turn up in Italy, I'm going to declare myself as a resident, and I'm not going to worry about it again. Okay. Doesn't work like that. You need to take advice. We are not tax lawyers, nor are we immigration lawyers. So what I would say to you is that we can help you to a degree, but you need to seek a professional advice. If, on the other hand, you purchase a property and that property is listed in a company or you want to buy a property in a company that might be an offshore company that might be a company which is slightly more complicated in Italy so I'm not going to go into that now you will need to pay 10% of the asking price now as a rule of thumb I tell everybody basically how much is this property going to cost me and I normally tell, say to them, it's going to cost between six and eight percent of your purchase price. And that is to include notary fees, agency fees, surveyors fees, 
and all the other little inky dinky taxes that you will need to pay. Previously, any book you read, it said it would be 10%, but that's before they changed the tax to pay the tax rules. And so I would estimate between six and 8% of the purchase price is going to be enough for you to as a guesstimate of what everything is going to cost to buy. Now, if you're going to buy it in a company, you need to increase that figure to between 13 to 16%. It's a lot more expensive. So you come to Italy, you found the property which you fall in love with and you want to buy. You've written your letter of offer, you know, which basically has been passed, um, which you've signed and you've passed the vendor and the vendor has signed it. That is giving you a period of exclusivity for you to actually spend some money for your due diligence. At the same time, we will be working very closely with the vendor to make sure that everything on the house is in a sellable condition. We pick a time for the signing of the preliminary contract. Now we will need wet ink signatures, which means that if you are in a different part of the world, we will need to cure you the copy or send it to you by a scan. You will need to print out three copies of it, which may be pages, you will need to sign every single copy and then you will need to courier those back to us. <laughs> we will then need to either send it to the vendor or you would courier it directly to the vendor, wherever he or she or they may be, and they would do exactly the same process and then they will cure it back to us in our office. Then we take the contract, we go to the official department and we register the contract officially with the tax authorities. <laughs> right, and we pay the little stamps, bolli, which you have to buy. Um, and then you stick them all over and they give you lots of stamps and that is it. The next step is the transfer of the deed, which is a date which will be decided by yourselves as the purchasers or yourselves as the vendors. And collectively, we come to a point and it will be probably on or no later than a fixed date. Now, I would probably say to you that I would probably have a little caveat at the end of that saying in cases of force majeure. So that means that it can be extended by mutual consent by both parties because you just never know. Things happen. You know, you never know. Now, you either need to be present in front of the notary who will read the contract to you, all of it, and it can be pages and pages and pages, or you need to give a power of attorney to either one of us, your lawyer, right, or somebody who speaks Italian to sign on your behalf. Now, you will need to get the full purchase price and all taxes either sent to the notary or sent to your lawyer or in the form of bank drafts prior to this date. Best way to do it, in my opinion, is to send all the funds to the notary. You, you, you just know, peace of mind, it's as safe as houses, <laughs> small pun, but at least if anything goes wrong, the notary is holding the funds and the notary then can disperse the funds on the day of the transfer of deed to the respective parties. Now, one has to remember as a purchaser, some notaries will not send you, if you are selling the property, your funds, which is quite difficult to basically get your head round, um, of the sale of your house until the contract has been registered. So there may be a day or four or five days. So it's not the fact that basically we, you know, somebody else has bought the house. Right? And then you don't get your money. You will get your money, but some notaries insist that until the contract is registered, the funds will not be sent. Yeah. 
Now we're going to talk about mortgages. Can you get a mortgage in Nestle? Well, yes, you can, and no, you can't. If you're a resident and you're living here and you're doing an Italian tax return, there is a very good possibility that you can get a mortgage. If you are not a resident and you do not live here, it is slightly more difficult, but it's not impossible. We've got great people that try to help you, but do not consider right, basically that you can just leverage the house and get an 80, 90% mortgage because you cannot. The maximum amount that I know of, of any bank which is giving mortgages to foreign buyers is 50% over a 15 year period. I know, I know, but you need to take that into consideration when you're looking to purchase a property. You can't just think to yourself, I am gonna get funding for this house because it just doesn't work like that. And I certainly don't want you to be disappointed. Right. Now, before we get to some of your questions, I think it's really important that, uh, you know, it, 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 you either get a pen and paper or you just basically just listen to what I'm about to tell you, because it's very important because I'm just going to have a general recap on everything which we have done so far. You come to Italy, you found the property of your dreams, you're so happy. You've made an offer to a vendor and the vendor has accepted your offer. You then sign a letter of engagement or a letter which is saying, yes, I want to buy this property. Here are my terms and conditions. And this is the period where we want to buy it. And we've got your name and your address. And at that point, we would have your tax code for you. Um, and we will have all the things which will stipulate within the contract and it will also say by the signing of this contract the property or the letter of offer the property will be removed from the open market from all other realtors or state agents for a period of let's say five or six weeks to enable you to do your due diligence. From that point, we will draft the first in conjunction with, if you use one, a lawyer and also the notary, the preliminary contract, which is the exchange of contracts. We are all working towards that date. When we find things are potentially need updating within the property, we will actually add that to the contract. And so the contract will become conditional. If the contract is subject to basically or the survey you would have all previously already had done. But it's really, it's the conditions which are important. A date within the preliminary contract will be set for the final deed. Now there will be a lead time of that, and that may be a minimum of four weeks, but it could be four months. You know, who knows, right, a period of time. In Italy, in August, most notaries go away for a month, you know, and it's very difficult to get anything really done between the end of July and the beginning of September. So you need to actually factor that point into whether, you know, when you're going to do the final deed, okay? Then we move forward to the final deed. In the meantime, basically, I would suggest to you, if you were looking to gain financing on the property, you do not sign the preliminary contract until you have your approved mortgage. And the signing of the preliminary contract, you will need to send potentially, or well not potentially, you will need to send between 10 and 30%. Almost every transaction that we do is 10% of the purchase price. Now, I would suggest that you send that to the notary, as I've mentioned in this video. So I would suggest to you to have it conditional, send it to the notary, send it to your escrow account, uh, send it to your lawyer's escrow account. Don't send it to us. We can't take it. On the day of the final deed, you will need to be present in front of the notary and you will need, if you do not speak Italian, an interpreter who is going to interpret the contract so you totally understand what you are buying. If not, you will need to instruct and pay for a POA, a power of attorney, 
so somebody else can sign on your behalf. Now, you might have work commitments and you're unable to get to Italy. It may be simpler for you to basically get somebody else to do it and we can do that for you as well. And it just may be an additional cost that you don't really want to spend. Why do I need to fly back when I'm actually coming in two weeks' time and, you know, I can do a power of attorney. Now, to do a power of attorney, if you want to do it in your own country, there will be a cost and that cost varies from country to country. So just bear that in mind. Once the notary has read the contract and everybody is happy, then whoever, yourselves or the person who is representing you via the POA will sign on your behalf and you will then receive the keys. As a vendor, you may not receive the funds for the sale of your property to three or four days afterwards until the registration of the deed has been completed. <sighs> Still with me? <laughs> I hope so. I tried, tried to cover as many things as I can within 19 years experience into this whatever it's going to be 25 minute video. So if you have other questions, please send them or put a message comment below and we will endeavor to answer those as well. Okay, now we are gonna move on to your wonderful questions. Right, so I'm going to uh, call you out um, by your YouTube handle. Um, I hope that I'm replying to all of you, um, but I might have missed somebody on the way, and if I had, I am sincerely sorry. Right, AMD. Additional taxes, hidden taxes. Yes, there are hidden taxes. There are taxes which basically people seem to forget, and they are rubbish tax. Now, your rubbish tax is not your property tax. And somebody has asked me another question about property taxes and why are property taxes low? They just are. Don't ask too many questions. They might go up. <laughs> just, that's, just that's the way it is. Um, your rubbish tax is basically the rubbish tax, but people, it's a separate department. You need to pay it. We've sold houses in the past and basically one of the team members has said, um, do you have any documentation because we do the changeovers for you um, of your rubbish tax? And they go, rubbish tax? Do I need to pay that? And they've owned the house for like 15 years. You know, so we've got to go back. They've got to pay it. So they get upset. But, you know, you've got to pay taxes. And that's the way there is. There also, depending on which region you're living in, may be a, an additional tax, which is for the maintenance of the roads and the general upkeep of the surrounding area. I know in Tuscany there is an additional tax um, and it's about 60 or 70 euros a year but it does vary from place to place. If you're in Malta Chino I think it's slightly more. If you're in Arezzo it's slightly cheaper but it does vary. Right. Richard and Maria. Hi guys. Happy New Year to you. Um, no, I don't know how to win the lottery, and if I did, I probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> um, I think I've answered your uh, question, which was money in escrow. Um, I Again, I would uh, suggest that you put it in escrow, um, it, then it's, it's safe um, with the lawyer or the e, uh, notary until the time where uh, conditions, if any, need to be met or have been met, um, or that the final contract um, has been signed, um, just for peace of mind. Um, right. Andrea J. Uh, visas. Yes, visas. It's a big topic right now, and I can't answer all your questions because I'm not qualified to do so. But I would say to you, Andrea J., um, I, what I do know is basically the visa that one can get here um, which they give you automatically is 90 days, a 90 day break, and then a further 90 days, making it in one year, 180 days. Now, if you want to be really militant about it, if you stay 181 days, you can get into trouble. But you need to ask, you know, a visa expert or immigration expert for further information, because unfortunately, I'm unable to help you with that. Next question. 
Um, and this is from uh, Nick Clay. Um, and he has asked me, um, and this might not apply to all of you, but um, a long time ago, um, wealthy people were buying homes in Wales and um, the Welsh people didn't want those people to be coming into their country and they started burning them down. Fortunately, that's not happening anymore. But he would like to know if there is any um, animosity or if there's any um, kind of negative sentiment for buying houses in Italy. And I will tell you now, as uh, a person who is half Italian and half English, uh, I have in the 19 years of living here never felt uh, all i felt personally is, is just love and joy you know just treat people as you expect to be treated and you will have absolutely no problems whatsoever um joe marshall hi joe um, what can I do uh, beforehand, uh, before moving to Italy? Any advice would be appreciated. Um, well, I don't know what to say to you, Joe. Um, you know, apart from choosing a location, apart from maybe if you're going to be a full-time residence here, making sure that you've got all your necessary paperwork, apart from spending the time here, if you come here, if you maybe that you've purchased your house, um, you've exchanged contracts, you've signed the preliminary contract, um, just ask the owners if you could come to the house or stay nearby, walk around, go to the bar, meet some people, have a chat, get to know your new area um, and, 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 you know, drink some nice wine, eat some beautiful food and have a beautiful life. Um, it's Letitia. Good name, Letitia. Um, what's the level of difficulty with renovation? <laughs> well, um, I'm on renovation number five, and I will tell you right now um, that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you will have problems. And it's just the nature of the beast. You know, it just that is it. But you have amazing builders here. And you need to understand that they might work in a slightly different way than where you live at this moment in time. So if you want things to be done in a New York second, it's probably not the right place for you. If you want things done to be within time, you know, and you do need, and there is a way that to get things done within a time frame. Um, but we are not going to go into that video today, right? Um, but it can be done and it, it can be like, it, it's always difficult. It, it, you know it's difficult. It's always difficult. But, you know, with a lot of will, love and determination, um, it will all get done at the end and you will be very, very happy. Right. Um, services, electricity um, and... Um, it's quite interesting that uh, if you buy a house in Italy um, and you're not a resident, your electricity is slightly more expensive. <laughs> I really don't understand why, but there you have it. Okay, moving on. Um, Jill Dean. Jill, you sent me three questions. Um, and the first question to you um, is, from, from you is basically, are foreigners accepted? Um, I believe that everybody has a right um, and we need to spend our life being kind to people. Um, and if you are kind to others, they will be kind to you. And the answer is most of the time, yes, to your question one. Question two, um, earthquakes, are there any? Yes, there are. Italy, like many other parts of the world, is a seismic country, apart from Sardinia. Remember, there are earthquakes um, like there are in California, um, and we just live with them. Live with them. I've been in a couple of them. It's an act of God. These buildings, the majority of the ones which we are selling have been standing for 500 years. I'm sure they're going to be standing for another 500 years. I wouldn't worry too much. 
Your question three, which I think is a jolly important question and a very good one. Is the area safe? In my 19 years of living in Italy, I have never been threatened. I have never had a anxious feeling um, and I have never been in a situation where I felt uncomfortable. And I hope that answers your question. Right, and last one is from um, Stephen Gilly. Stephen, um, you just put about me. Well, about me, um, it's a bit personal, but I would tell you that I'm half English, half Italian. I'm not quite sure which half is which. <laughs> um, I moved to Italy in the late uh, 80s, actually, early 90s. Um, when I had another life as a professional photographer um, and I came back to Italy uh, with my young son in 2003-2004 uh, uh, because I just love this country. I just love everything about it and I want to live in the sun. I just want to thank all of you um, for basically um, coming here and coming to this channel and subscribing to this channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, and Kirk, this is, I'm going to say this every week, Kirk, for you. Um, if you, um, for all of you of who have subscribed to this channel, I really can't thank you enough. And for everybody else, if you'll be so kind and just push those buttons and that would help me so I could help you. Next week, we're going to be on a rummage. I'm not quite sure where it's going to be, but I hope you will come and enjoy me there. Have a great week. Happy New Year. I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. And now I'm going to finish my salad.